Uh, Mayhem is, it's a church, you know, it's faith, family, fitness, service. Uh, we've got a spot for you. It's a place for people that are looking for more. It's a place that people are, you know, looking to grow personally, um, spiritually. We're going to help you grow fitness. Obviously, that's that's kind of why you're probably here, but we're going to help you in all areas of life. Yes. I don't know that I ever talk about myself. This is very new. Okay, my name is Summer Turner. I am 34 years old. I have two kids. One is six and one is five. I am married to my high school sweetheart. I grew up with my parents being about 25 years apart. So we always were aware of the fact that my dad didn't have great health cardiovascular issues, bypass surgeries done. He had a pacemaker put in probably when we were two, three years old. Um, we were taught how to call 911 just in case mom wasn't at home. He lived on a farm. With that comes a lot of like the Southern diet, bacon and eggs, cooked in bacon grease every day. Didn't exercise later in life. He was a truck driver and you're always eating out fast food and his entire job was like to sit in a chair and then drive through hours of night. That type of lifestyle is very difficult. He would stand underneath the basketball goal and like retrieve baskets for me as I shot, but he couldn't like walk to chase after him if they went off. He would get out of breath really easily, like even just like walking to our mailbox and back. I was at a basketball practice after school and my neighbor showed up to take me home. When I got there to our house, ambulance was actually like pulling away from my house as people were telling me. When my brother came home from school, he found my dad having a massive heart attack in the middle of our kitchen floor. So that was obviously very shaping of my childhood. Um, my mom's a rock star. She is an amazing person. Um, she all of a sudden was alone and with three kids. I don't know how she did all. Now that I am a mom myself, I can't imagine going through that. And to make it even harder, a few years later, she was remarried and he died in a scuba diving accident out of town in South Carolina. And again, my brother and my sister, we had to go through all of that all over again, and my mom did as well. <laughs> he is the person that walked me down the aisle. He is a huge influence in my life as well. Both, both of my dads were very strong in their faith, very principle-oriented, and that's how I feel like I've grown up and how I am raising my kids. My mom was an amazing mom. Um, like I said, she took on a lot. We were all very active kids, so I'm not sure what part of her life really fit into our kid life um, because she was just always doing things for us. And because of that, I think I'm very sensitive to asking someone to do anything for me because I know when you ask for something like that, someone else is putting off what they would want to do. And not that that's a bad thing that you ask for help if you need it, but that's pretty close to impossible for me. Um, my husband is probably the only person that knows most of the struggles I go through. Um, and he is amazing. But just as a person growing up the way I did with someone who sacrifices so much and seeing that makes you be more independent, even if you don't want to be. But it also breeds quite a bit of stubbornness, um, which I can acknowledge I have. Very difficult for me to have. like 
relationships with people and like depend on people. I don't, I don't typically do that. When you're so used to losing things, you minimize the amount of things that you allow yourself to lose. You don't open up. Everybody kind of knew me as the kid that lost her dad, um, but he was new to the school. He had moved here, so he didn't know me that way. We just continued to date after high school and into college, graduated and did get married. Ended up having two kids. After Caroline's birth is kind of when I realized we were stuck in a stage of like being with little kids and not going anywhere, not going out because, you know, nap schedules and sleep eating times. And I mean, it would have been three straight years of like an infant baby was born alive. Then another infant baby was born. So now there's two. There's not a whole lot that you get to do as a individual. It's what a lot of people refer to as like the survival years. It has wonderful wonderful parts but we knew where we were wasn't exactly where we wanted to be forever so we moved to cookville and we got settled into our life but i realized that being mom is hard you know um doing the things that little children need you to do all the time all day from the beginning to the end and then still having energy for your husband and for life and like to be a person yourself, it's just hard. And people don't talk about that. And it's wonderful being mom. And it's a it's a privilege and a gift. But I want to be honest, it it's it wasn't it wasn't didn't feel like it was my gift. It feels like you just keep doing the same thing on repeat in different clothes. I started to realize that just doing life was a little bit more physically demanding and hard. Just little things like I would get out of breath easily. I, you know, was lifting laundry baskets and having to do it with two hands instead of just being able to grab, like picking up my kids to go into their, into the car seats and then getting them out. I had to make sure my feet were in the right way. Otherwise, when I went to twist and put them in the grocery cart, then my back would hurt for a couple of days. I had very bad varicose veins um so there would be days i would wake up and i'd immediately like go to put my feet down and just shooting pain up your leg i wonder if everyone lives with these little struggles or i wonder if there's anything i can do i grew up playing sports i was a pretty athletic person um if it had a ball in it i was game volleyball softball soccer um you know, basketball. Being active was just a given. I'd never not been able to lift things up, move stuff from place to place. I'm kind of embarrassed to admit I could not do five push-ups on my knees in a row. To me, fitness is being able to like lift your kids. It's being able to do your laundry, bring in your groceries. And doing a push-up is like a functional movement of like upper body strength, being able to hold, I mean, my core was non-existent. Like most women after having kids, I was at that point of like, wow, this is in my face. Like if I don't do something to like get myself back on track, I would end up not being able to walk to the mailbox. I would be in the same boat that he was in. Your mind starts going to the worry of like, will my kids have to raise themselves? Like, like I did, you know? And that wasn't an option. That's where Something as small as not being able to do a push-up, not being able to hold stuff. I mean, I can remember several times trying to put something in the oven or pulling something out of the oven, and I would get shooting pains on my arm and end up dropping it. For two years in a row, I was not allowed to put the turkey in the oven at Thanksgiving. At the end of the day, Kyle and I would sit down together and talk about our day. I was always saying the same thing. Today was a hard day. I am exhausted. And eventually Donna was like, we say this a lot. We needed to stop trying to survive. That was my turning point of, I am not going to let my inactivity create a long-term problem where I am robbed from like life of like my health. Not just for me, but for my kids and to, for my husband and like for our family. I'm not, I don't want to leave them by themselves. And I got an ad for Mayhem Athlete. At home workouts, it didn't look like it was dance steps, so I was interested. I was like, oh, this looks like an actual workout. Basically kind of guaranteed a 30 minute you know, sweat session. 
and very minimal equipment. But it was saying that it was for all athlete levels. But I mentioned it to Kyle. I was like, this thing keeps popping up. And for whatever reason, I just like, I keep looking at it. And I think I could do this at home with the kids. I needed to pick up something that like I can do consistently because like I'm not a runner. I don't, I don't run. Bear needs to be chasing me for running to happen. What is he saying? What? Big Bear chase me! Oh my gosh, like, okay, nope, that was not the plan. Again, I had told Kyle, so he looked at it and then he he already knew this about Cookville, but I didn't know, you know, if you're in Cookville, if you're gonna do CrossFit, you've gotta do it at Mayhem. People move here to do CrossFit. I'm like, I didn't know that. And I think he tried not to tell me that for a little while. He got like, she's like, you should go to this gym. It's right down the road. But it didn't take much of a Google search to be like, Oh my gosh, like the world's best CrossFitters work out here. It's a little mental twist to see if you're able to handle something that is thrown at you when you don't think it's possible. This was not what I was saying that I was like ready to jump into. That was about as far away as possible from where I was at. I can't even do push-ups. I'm not about to walk into a gym, you know, is full of just people that are like super fit. Once I decided that I might be able to do this, so let, let me go check out this gym. I found out that I wouldn't have to like go in and be like, hey, I'm new. I could actually just like sneak in by going to a coffee house. I can fit it in a coffee house and I'll sit down. I'll see, you know, like who comes in? What do they talk about? Not to be weird, but like, what are they wearing? Do people actually sweat at these workouts? Like, do I put my hair up? Do I wear shorts? Is this like a yoga pants? For, and like, I mean, I had no idea. Then I found out that they also have a little shop, but you had, it was like behind a fence. So of course I couldn't go in the fence because you'd have to drive through the fence and like, so I'd park through the Buffalo Grit and then I'd walk around the parking lot because only the people that join the gym can go through the fence. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll just get a t-shirt and then I'll like wear it. Um, and then it feel more comfortable. Several times went in there, several times came out. Did not make me feel more comfortable. Hi, good, how are you? I told Kyle, I was like, for Christmas, this is what I want. I saw the Black Friday ads. Well, that's that's a done deal. And he was excited because he knew as soon as I'd started doing it, I'd be end up joining the gym with him and then we'd both do it. That's what I got for Christmas. I got a pair of Nano's shoes and I got Mayhem Athlete. On January 1st, 2021, I was hitting the ground running. In order to get down there immediately, I knew that I needed to not be looking at the workout, like seeing it for the first time when I got down there. I wanted to be, when I walked through the basement door, I was ready to go. What that meant for me was look at my phone, find out what that day's workout was. My kids and I would kind of do stretches or like a little mini workout for them. When the kids went down for their nap, go straight down. No doing laundry before, even if something was waiting on me, like the table had dishes on it, or like I was just grabbing my phone, going, because the timer had started. And to get 30 minutes in, most of the time I could count on my kids being down for 30 minutes, but it might not work for 33 minutes. CrossFit was surprising to me. I love CrossFit. I mean, and not, I didn't know that I would love CrossFit. The way that the workouts are designed is what I love the most about it. After, you know, a couple of weeks, a couple of days, you realize the beauty in it. I would be sore from doing whatever it was on Monday and be like, oh, I wonder what Tuesday's gonna be. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this because like my legs are heavy and then it'd be arm day. And then you go the next day and it like just rotated the way, the parts of your body that you're working. And that was like amazing to me. I thought that was the coolest thing. Even just simple movements that would be what I wouldn't necessarily consider a workout because you did them in this order or in this like time constraint and like it would tell you like the strategy go fast here slow yourself down like it just made it entirely different Dead. I 
I was hooked. It, it didn't take long. I mean, I was so excited about just being able to do this that it was like, you know what? I finished in 15 minutes. I don't hear anything. I'm going to do another one. On active rest days turned into usually a workout that either I didn't finish well or that just sounded like fun or a bodybuilding one. I did that on my rest day. I don't rest well. I don't. <laughs> I try. I tried to, but I went from zero to working out six days a week. I was looking forward to that time every day. So after I finished, I would write down what I did. It made me feel like, okay, I can look back at this. When was the last time we did something similar? As I'm like strategizing how to do stuff. And then I would also log it in the app. You log your results. It's like the little button. And at first I was like, oh, I don't know what I want. I mean, you can make that private or you can make it public. Even if I didn't even complete the workout, that log button, it wasn't an option. Like that was me tracking, like I got that done. It didn't matter where I felt on the leaderboard per se. The leaderboard was like really cool. I could fist bump people. If I got to where I knew who was like in the bottom with me and I would like see how many rounds they did and be like, okay, I can do that many rounds. You know, I want to know where like the gist of where like I should be and then maybe push a little bit more above that. This first year of like joining Mayhem, I was ready. I logged over 280 workouts in that first year. I was not punishing myself. This was for fun. So sometimes the workouts, I would read them. There's no way that that's possible. You know what? I'm not going to worry about the number. I'm just going to break it up. It was a lot of workouts regarding burpees. Anything that was like 20 or more of those, I was like, are you kidding me? I started with a number of like three. I'm going to do sets of three. You don't stop if you're in the middle of three. And then you can rest and then you do it again. And after learning how that worked, I could do that with all the different movements. If other people can do it, I can do it. You know, it's just I'm going to have to figure out how to do it. Even if it was down to like one at a time, like I can do one more. I can do one more and one more. Like if I just kept telling myself that it was only one and somehow one rep at a time, I finished it. Some of these workouts that I just looked at initially, I was like, this is impossible. Ended up being possible. By the end of the year, I was probably the fittest I have been definitely all of my adult years. Going into next year, I knew I just didn't want to just do nothing. Um, and I was gonna work myself into the gym. That was the next year's goal. It took me about six more months before I was ready to try. And that's when I realized how scared I was. Comparing myself to people that like, I knew I wasn't ever gonna be like, you know, some super fit competitive person. And like mayhem was that. Like mayhem gym was like, what people portray mayhem as being. And it's like, that wasn't me. I was a online mayhem person, but joining the gym was like, I would rather be shot than join the gym. I don't fit in here. They're gonna laugh me out of this place. And when I joined the gym, it was the complete opposite. I've never been welcomed into a group of people as quickly and as genuinely as CrossFit Mayhem did. People were like helping me try to set stuff up, showing me where things were. Like I didn't know where the clips that go on the end of the bar were. And so it didn't, I didn't have to ask anyone. Someone just saw me and was like, Kelsey, let me grab those for you. Mayhem was more than I expected. They're there to move, to push themselves to what they can do. It, it wasn't about like setting records. No, it was like a shared suffering, you know, but a like joyful suffering if you can say that even if we were all doing the same workout we would all be doing it within our capacity at our speed but at the end the celebration was the same we all finished and that's what it was about it was just it was a normal group of people that was doing fitness together a few weeks ago i came into the gym looked at the board the very beginning of the workout was to run a mile does he know that that's not a 
beginning part of a workout like that that is a workout like that is the whole workout i can't even remember the last time i ran a mile i remember the very beginning seeing like 100 meters come up or running it's a long way then it started doing you know 250 running and i don't get along it's hard on my feet it's hard on my legs it's hard on my back but i was doing it it was on the board and i had showed up so it was not an option not to do it but you know, sometimes CrossFit has to humble you a little bit, which is part of the beauty of it. And it was a time cap workout, so it was supposed to end. And I had already talked to Nick. I was like, I am going to get time cap, but I am going to just keep running if that's okay with you, because I'd like to know what my time is. And so he was like, absolutely. So I did. so excited to just finish that workout. And that was a bigger number than I wanted it to be, but I've gotten better at this. I've actually like improved, not just a little bit, a good and substantial amount. That's a big victory. So when I first started working out in the basement, I noticed that, you know, Mayhem also has like a faith track. I was like, why does everyone try to put faith into their business things? I started realizing that CrossFit does make you mentally stronger and spiritually stronger. If you're struggling and suffering through life, it's a lot like suffering through a workout. You usually notice when your capabilities of overcoming that and, and now you need something else. There would be times when I would be, you know, tearing up the like, I cannot lift my leg again. And it was almost like in the back of your head, somebody was like, Yes, you can. You start to acknowledge, this is not just me. This is he who lives in me too. Realizing that suffering is part of being more Christ-like. Mayhem gave me just a reminder of like, hey, we're Mayhem and we believe in working hard physically for your body. But did you know you also have a, a spiritual side that we also believe is beneficial to work to? Let us provide you some tools, like even just that reminder of like a community that comments and says, I prayed about this. I was grateful for these words, like this hit home with me. There were times when I would read it and I'm like, this is exactly what I needed today. I think that it enabled me to dig deeper in my workouts realizing and developing a deeper sense of like my faith as well. The Bible calls you to be different than your natural nature. God calls you to pray for your enemies. You have to train your body and your mind especially to like to not react right off the bat. And that person that you are interacting with, your witness to them is your character and the way that you treat this interaction. I think CrossFit taught me to be more humble, but I think you have to be humbled at times to really understand that, to try to do hard things till they're not hard, till you do it with ease and then you level up. Because there's always another level. There's always another challenge. You don't get to avoid that when you are, when you've committed to doing workouts and you're struggling. And when you're a mom and you've had a hard day and you're there to get your, you know, exercise pump up there's a time when it just hits you and it's like i'm gonna lose it crying i think was one of god's ways of being like are you ready for me now like do you realize that you can't do it all that's what i needed i had to commit to asking for help from him i would say it took about one month till 
I just all of a sudden realized I haven't dropped anything. And that was eye-opening. Like you could make that much progress on those just little things in a month. I mean, there were times when I would do my nap time workout and then, you know, I had enough energy that I went back down at the end of the day, like after my kids went down to do a workout, come back up and then still finish the sink. I would run a load of laundry. I'd fold stuff. That's life changing for a mom. I don't think I will ever stop doing CrossFit. 10 minutes worth of physical activity gave me results that I'm, I won't turn back you know I'm not going back to the person that was there's no reason to go back you know they're like once you have made it I can do hard things just give me some more hard things you know like I think I can do more I have leveled up my ability to like live better not like not some CrossFit crazy athlete that competes on the weekends like no I I just can bring all my groceries in in one trip from the car to the house, loaded up on, on both arms. I'm not worried about maybe having a heart attack in my kitchen. I can carry my feed bags for my goats and my chickens on my shoulder to the animals. I can carry my kids. I can throw them in the air. Just the ability to live and like not be wore out by those things, that's life now. I think in today's world, people spend too much time thinking that they should try to get things to fit in what they can handle. And I think we need to spend more time increasing your capacity to take on more. Growth happens when you're uncomfortable and working through that. If you never put yourself in a position to be uncomfortable, you're never gonna go anywhere. You can't skip ahead. You have to choose to do something hard. It needs to be something you, you may have thought was impossible in order to accomplish impossible. So based on that, I, I will have to admit, I, I begrudgingly have agreed. I'm gonna do something that I've never done before. So I'm going to do the CrossFit Open this year. Are you nervous about doing it? Absolutely. Why are you nervous? Mainly because I don't know what it is yet. I can't prepare specifically for it so it's unknown yes so once it's announced then i feel like i can get in a better space as of right now it just seems like one of those impossible rocks that we're just gonna bust up this year all right then we'll give it over to the man the director of the crossfit games dave castro i'm excited 24.1 is oh man